Greetings everybody, it's April and it's time for a new set of my current favorite picture books. I'm Miss Tara and I'm a librarian at the Northwest Library and we hope that you've had a chance to come into our, our locations and visit us now that our doors are open. So I'm going to go ahead and get started and usually I end with the nonfiction books but I thought this month I would start with the nonfiction books. So my first book today is called Crossings. Extraordinary Structures for Extraordinary Animals. So we've got some big vocabulary words in there for your little ones, like extraordinary. This was written by Katie S. Duffield and illustrated by Mike Oradon. Okay, and this book is about different, different crossings that they have created around the world that help animals um, cross the road safely. Um, and so it has great illustrations. I love these illustrations. It says the Trans-Canadian Highway is home to more than 40 wildlife overpasses and underpasses. And this benefits the elk. Um, I had no idea that sugar gliders receive um, such attention. Uh, they get on the Hume Highway um, for these squirrel gliders, they get like a bridge that goes across for them. I actually learned quite a few things. They even have things for penguins in here. So this is a very informative book for little ones, especially if you have those that love animals. This one is a perfect one for them. And again, beautiful illustrations. This one's kind of silly. It's called Snoozerama, The Strange Ways That Animals Sleep written by Maria Bir Birmingham and illustrated by Kyle Reed. You think about how our animals sleep at home. Our cats sleep with, our, with their heads hanging off beds and couches and our dogs sleep with their legs in the air, but maybe your kids wonder how other animals um, sleep. So this is the magnificent frigate bird and they actually sleep with one eye open while they're flying because um, they don't often touch land. Uh, I think that's a cool fact. How about bees? When did they take a nap? Well, they grip onto these little leaves here. Um, and I like the play. It says, you, uh, while you make your bed in the morning, an orangutan builds a nest each night. So it kind of gives your child um, something to relate to, to all the different animals. Um, so I think this one is really fun and again great illustrations and that's snooze -arama. and then I can't help but throw a bird book in there because I like birds so much um, and this is called bird show and it's written and illustrated by Susan Stockdale okay and it's got simple wording in it so if you have a new reader they may be able to read this on their own or just with a little bit of help so this one here, yeah, he boasts an outfit for every hue. And my jacket has two. So there's rhyming in here and just real simple um, pictures. My dress has a face. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just, it's really cool, I think. It's very simple wording, but really lovely illustrations and about real birds. And I believe at the end, it'll tell you what each of those birds is called. Yeah. So you can kind of um, talk to your kids about the, these different birds and where they might see them. So again, that's bird show. Uh, Earth Day is approaching us. So I feel like a lot of our books might have like an Earth Day type theme, theme to them. This is called Once Upon Another Time and it's by Charles Jehinga and Matt Forrest Eswine. Okay, once upon another time. And it just talks about what the earth looked like um, a long, long time ago when rivers rushed through canyon walls and the land was fresh and the air was clean. There weren't big cities. Um, or airplanes, but it talks about how things changed over time um, and what we have now and what we can do differently. So, you can play outside in the rain, 
Chase a rainbow, taste the rain. So things that your child can do too. So again, this is once upon another time, kind of going back into time and seeing what the earth looked like before we built big cities and had all of our cars, right? Uh, if you're looking for something funny, kind of laugh out loud, uh, duck, duck, moose, um, I would say is a great funny book. Words and Pictures by Mary Sullivan. You know, duck, duck, goose, everybody knows. But duck, duck, moose, duck, duck, moose. So this little girl can't find goose. And duck, duck, and moose, her friends, are very worried. Um, so they, they, they try to go and find goose, but they have lots of problems. Things get stuck in the mud. Gates are locked. They try to get some keys, but up with the keys are some bees, buzz, 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 and they all get stung. And then they're laying in bed, and who should come home for poor Duck Duck and Moose but their friend Goose. So uh, it's kind of a funny book, lots of laugh out loud moments. And again, excuse me, that's by Mary Sullivan. This one is about friendship. This is Hugo and the Impossible Thing by Renee Felice Smith and Chris Gabriel, illustrated by Sydney Hansen. This is Hugo and this is the Impossible Thing. And it's been an impossible thing for as long as Hugo can remember. And he's not sure why that it's an impossible thing. There is more text, so you may want to read it with your child if they're younger, or if you have um, an older child who prefers picture books over um, chapter books, this might be a good one for them. So Hugo asks Mrs. Bear, why is it the impossible thing? It's always been that way. And he asks his friend Fox and Beaver, and he says, well, I'm gonna try that impossible thing. So the next morning, as he's walking to do that impossible thing, he um, can't find any of his friends. Um, goat's not where he's supposed to be. Beaver's not where he's supposed to be. Um, but that's because, let me get there. They're waiting for him to help him get to that impossible thing. So um, a good story about conquering uh, your fears and um, about friendship. I like this one. This one is funny. Okay, this is called Look Out Leonard um, by Jesse James and Tamara and Anagon. I hope I said that right. Um, this is about a family of shrews and they're moving. So it's a big move day and they have a far way to go across the forest. And um, Mama Shrew says, everybody hold on to a tail. So everybody holds on to a tail except for Leonard who grabs onto the orangutan tail and he catches onto an alligator's tail and he grabs a parrot's tail um, all while his family is trying to move. Oh no, there's a tiger coming and they're all very scared. Um, so throughout the whole book, they're saying, look out Leonard, look out Leonard. So, so the smallest mouse uh, causes, wreaks some havoc in this story. Um, it's a lot of fun. It's called Look Out Leonard again. Hello Rain is by Kaya McClear and Chris Turnham. Uh, lots of colors. I really like this one. For kids who hate that rainy day. And April is also poetry month. Um, and so this is kind of written um, like a poem. Uh, lots of rhyming. Um talking about what a rainy day looks like if you go out and play and the different cuddle of puddles that you see and the different things that you can do. So I really love the illustrations like this in this one. The different plants that you can see after it's rained. This is just a fun one about the rain, especially if you're stuck inside on a um, rainy day. This is a fun one to read. If you have cats, this is perfect for you. This is called Bad Cat uh, by Nicola O'Brien. Uh, I have an orange cat and a lot of this stuff <laughs> rang true for me. 
Um, I like the paw prints across the book. Okay, this is called Bad Cat. And the orange cat's name is Fluffykins. Um, please be careful with the flowers. What's it gonna do with the flowers? We all know what he's gonna do with the flowers. And we know what he's gonna do with that ball of yarn. And all the bad things that he does. <laughs> um, but we still love them. And he does apologize at the end of the book. Mm -hmm. But this is how it ends. The same way all cats do, right? It's a silly book. I like it. Uh, this one is called Cliff uh, the Failed Troll. Uh, and I like this warning, there be pirates in this book. This is by Barbara Davis Piles. And it's illustrated by Justin Hillgrove. And this, this book is about being a little different from everybody else. He's a troll. He's supposed to do troll things. He's supposed to be mean to people. Um, let's see. He's supposed to sit still during troll class. Uh, so for Cliff, for bridge building, he got an F. For stony staring, he got an F. And for moss management, he got an F. So he feels really bad about himself and he would rather be a pirate. So we'll see um, what Cliff does. Continue to read this book with your family just to see um, how Cliff is different from everybody else and it's okay. Again, this is Cliff the Failed Troll. This book is called My Monster and Me, a reassuring story about sharing our worries. Um, by Nadia Hussein and uh, illustrated by Ella Bailey. If you are a fan of the Great British Baking Show, this is the Nadia who won one of the seasons. Um, and this is a story about a little boy who worries a lot. And he worries about lots of different things. There's Nadia from the Great British Baking Show. Um, so this is his monster who's big and tall and scary and wide and this is him so the worry is bigger than he is right now um and you he talks about all the things him and his worry do and all the things that he's afraid of um but then the end you know he figured out how to make his worry this big and him this big which i think this book is perfect for all ages because we all have a worry in us from time to time so I really like this, um, My Monster and Me, about our feelings and feeling worried, which pandemic and everything else, your kids might feel a little worry right now. So kind of a perfect book. All right. Blue Floats Away, words by Travis Junker and pictures by Grant Snyder. This is Little Blue, not to be conf uh, confused with Big Blue up in Michigan. This is Little Blue. And this is Little Blue's mom, or mom and dad, and they're icebergs. And one day, there's a crack, and he floats away. And he floats away from his parents, and he's really sad, and he's really worried. Um, but the story goes on to tell you about all the things that happens as he shrinks um, and gets smaller and melts into different oceans and what he becomes. And eventually, he does get back to his parents, but eh, he looks a little bit different. So this is a good story about family. It's also a good science story without being scientific about how water becomes clouds and whatnot. So blue floats away. Got a couple more for you. This is called uh, Garden Jungle by Helena Druver. This one is just a really pretty one. There's a little boy and he's bored and his mom says, find something to do. My mom's never said that to me when I was a kid. But look at the, so he goes into the forest and he finds a butterfly and he finds all these cool things. Um, and there's these really cool cutouts throughout the story. Let's see if I can get you some more. All right, so these are all the cool things he finds in the jungle. All right, so that one's really pretty. And then, my last one today is called, I'm a hare, so there. 
And this book is about a ground squirrel and a hare. Um, and the reason why I share this one is because if you've ever been to the Northwest Library during the spring, summer, and fall, um, we have 13 lined ground squirrels here. So this is the first picture book I've ever seen with a ground squirrel in it. So this is called I'm a Hare, So There, Stories and Pictures by Julie Rowan Zook. Zook. All right. And um, I'm not a rabbit. I'm a hare. So there. Uh, so just a kind of a silly book about, you know, the squirrel says, hello, rabbit. And he says, no, I'm a hare. And the squirrel says, no, I'm not a squirrel. I'm a ground squirrel. Technically a ground squirrel. Um, so it's just kind of funny. A, lot, a little bit of sarcasm for kids. So, so I'm a hare, so there. So those are the picture books I have for you for this month. I feel like I've gone on for a long time. If you want to see any of these books that we have that I've shared today, you can go on our website or you can give us a call and we'll get those reserved for you. Um, if you have any questions, of course, always reach out to us and we're getting ready for summer reading. Um, at the branches and we'll have more to announce about that shortly. So I have hope you have a r great rest of the April and I'll catch you in May. Have a great day.